Hey, how's it going? Hans Schaff here, coming to you from the riverbanks of the Colorado River in Colorado. Brought, driving through the Rockies right now, um, just west of uh, Glenwood Springs. And today I want to talk about tiny homes. What is a tiny home? Uh, first of all, a tiny home is just a small house, but it's a lot more than that. Um, and I want to share some information here and some perspective because a lot of people I don't think really get this new trend. And it's not even really that new, it's just really starting to catch on and become more and more popular. And there's a lot of reasons for that, which I'll share here in a minute. But, you know, I talk to some people and they're just, they don't get it. I can tell by the look and by the, the way they talk back when I explain to them, they just, they don't get it. They don't see it. They relate to, to other things and just in their relating of other things, I can tell they don't understand the idea. It, it, maybe it makes sense to them, but they don't see themselves ever being able to live that lifestyle. And it's not for everybody. But uh, just so you can understand why tiny homes is really starting to pick up and why it's so exciting and really the many benefits of it, let me share a, few, a little bit of information. First of all, a tiny home is not, like downsizing to a, a tiny home is not actually giving up part of your life. It's not actually going backwards. It's actually moving forwards. And that's, I think, one of the biggest misconceptions that people have. You know, for, for years, we've all been taught, you know, the American dream is to buy a big house. You know, you get a pay raise, what do you do? You get a bigger house and you just keep getting a bigger and bigger house, uh, you know, just to keep up with the Joneses, right? And what does that mean? I mean, it means you're, you're paying for more space, which means you've got more space to heat, more space to cool, more space to insure, more space to pay, or more expense really, to pay for real estate taxes, and more space to upkeep, maintain, repair, and clean. Uh, you know, I used to live in a 5,000 square foot house in uh, Hampton Cove, Alabama. You know, three car garage, seven bedrooms, like four and a half or five and a half bathrooms, pool, spa, nice yard, you know, homeowner association, tennis courts, the whole nine yards, right? It was nice. You know, I enjoyed it. What I did not enjoy was the $4,000 mortgage payment. The, uh, I can't even remember what the taxes were on it, probably $2,000 a year, which is probably low for most places in the country this is Alabama so you know that they're going to be low um, and granted that same size house in California you'd probably be making eight thousand dollar payments on it um, you know it's three levels had a really nice kitchen you know nice furniture to boot we had to spend I think twelve thousand dollars in furniture just to furnish the house to make it look nice I mean just to kind of fit with with the image with the area what was there is twenty thousand dollars with the furniture we bought for twelve thousand dollars so I mean there was just a lot of expense for this house and it was always one of my dreams, right, to have a nice big house and all this. And it was for, at the time, me and my wife and two dogs, right? I mean, that's essentially, we had this massive house. We lived on one level. Then there was a basement with another room and, and a whole upstairs that, you know, we used for offices. But, I mean, there were like three or four guest rooms. Who needs three or four guest rooms in a house? Why pay, you know, all this extra money each month just to have some guest rooms in case somebody comes to town, in case your whole family and all your friends come to town all one time, right? What, um... Sorry, I had to pull my radar detector out. It's kind of beeping. Um, but why spend, you know, all that money each month? Just, you're throwing it away. What's it for, you know? And again, this this whole thing about, you know, and again, Kiyosaki is one that really helped point this out to me. And it, But this was even though I, ha I still wanted the big house, right? But he was the one that made it very clear. You know, your house is not an asset. I mean, it is an asset. It's just not your asset. It's a liability for you. It's an asset for the bank. You make payments on it, and basically they own you. The bank owns you and you have to continue to make payments. You're a slave to the bank. And if you ever get behind in your payments, guess what? You lose the whole house, no matter how much you've paid. I mean, you could have spent 29 years with 30 year mortgage paying down the mortgage. And yet, you, you know, if you default for, you know, three months in a row, boom, house is gone pretty, pretty much. Right. So um, there's a, a huge a drawback there, which I'll get into in a minute. But back to this concept about, you know, this, this house that I had in Hampton Cove, it was it was ridiculous. You know, we'd spend our weekends pretty much cleaning the house. And I much would have rather been out enjoying the, the, out, the outdoors, you know, playing tennis, going for a bike ride, walking the dog, playing soccer, traveling, whatever, instead of cleaning the house, right? Okay, yeah, we could have paid for a maid or somebody to come through and clean the house. It would have been several hundred dollars more per month. I mean, just more expense, right? It got old pretty quick. And I don't know if, if you're in a house right now and you're thinking, man, I, I want a bigger house. I want more space, more space. You know, the only reason you want more space is because you got too much crap. <laughs> I'm being honest. Um, the amount of stuff that we accumulate over the years that we get attached to, some worse than others, but we all tend to hold on to stuff. And when you really think about it and you really pare it down, which is the kind of the, the terminology they use in the tiny home um, 
uh, movement, I guess. They call it paring down when you get rid or offload a bunch of your junk that you don't need. You realize how much stuff you really don't need. And that's that, that's that baggage that you're carrying around that's really holding you back in all areas of your life. This, this video is actually kind of going in all different directions. It's kind of getting me passionate here. But, see, I got divorced uh, about a year ago, um, nine months to a year ago. And that's when I, I had to go through a lot of this old stuff that I've been carrying around from house to house to house. You know, I've, I've lived in California. You know, I went to school in I was born and raised in Sacramento, right? I went to school in San Diego, lived in Lake Tahoe, lived in England, lived in Germany, lived in Wales, lived in Alabama, and I'm moving to Colorado soon. And all these different places, I've been taking stuff, bringing stuff with me, carrying it around, loading the U-Haul, all this and all that. And, uh, you know, you, you realize how much junk you've got. I mean, I had boxes of just unopened mail. I mean, it was ridiculous. So it was a, a difficult process, you know, with the divorce and all, a lot of emotions there too, just, you know, having to kind of... Um, get through and go through a bunch of this stuff but I'll tell you it's such a well, such a freeing feeling of getting rid of a bunch of junk stuff that you, you're never going to open you're never going to use never going to refer to anyway you hold on to old magazines you know all sorts of you know old clothes all the stuff that you know you think has got sentimental value and there's other things you can do with it you can repurpose it you can make it in make clothes into a quilt um, that's something you're actually going to use or make it into pillows I've seen stuffed animals made out of clothes out of old sweaters and things um you can um, take pictures of, of things that have sentimental value that take up a lot of space that you're never going to use but you just want it because you don't want to get rid of it. Take a picture of it. Take a video of it. You know, and you've got that and you can store it digitally. It's just, that'll store up a bunch of space. So my point is we, we have all this extra space that we're paying for each month thinking that you know, we're better off and that we're, we're feeling good. But really it's holding us back. And again, it's not for everybody. Some people, they really cling to that extra space. They cling to the big house. And that to, to them, that gives them purpose. It gives them value. It gives them meaning. Okay, more power to them, I guess, you know, but really, you're not your house, and you're not your job, just like you're not your car, you're not your anything else, but you are a sum total of your experiences, right? I mean, that's all that you basically can leave with. You look back in the past, and really, all that you've ever, all that you've got is the experiences, the memories of it all, which you can capture on video and, and photography and stuff like that, um, but really, you know, you are not your job or your house, so... Um, but that's a topic for another, another discussion, right? Really, <laughs> I started to go off on tangents. I just realized there's so much here in this topic. But so the whole idea behind tiny homes is you can really free yourself of a lot of stuff. You can free yourself of all your junk that you don't need. That's just really holding you back in all areas for all different reasons. It, hold, it, it may be holding you back emotionally without you really realizing it too. You're holding on to something and clinging to it, you know, for security or for safety. And, it's, and you've, you've become paralyzed by it. But, um, you know, it also frees you up of, of, the, of the expense and the hassle of having to make this huge mortgage payment each month or a rent payment even, you know. You could be freeing up that thousand, two thousand, three thousand, eight thousand dollars per month and use that to travel with. Use that to, you know, buy your friends gifts and buy your family gifts to uh, go skiing or, um, you know, to put away for your kids' college education or to give to your church or charity. I mean, there's so many more better uses of that money than just basically giving it over to the bank just so that you can, you know, have places to hide in your house or whatever, right? Um, on top of that, you can, you know, you don't, you don't have real estate taxes depending on how what kind of tiny home you, you choose, or you can have a much far less reduced or far more reduced real estate tax bill. And uh, because a tiny home is so affordable, you ac actually can pay for it without a mortgage at all. In most cases, you actually don't even need you don't need to have insurance. So that's one more less thing that you need to have. You probably still want to get insurance, you know, just in case so a tornado comes through and tears through it, you know, you don't have to start all over again, but it's, it's optional. It's not required as it would be with a mortgage company. Um, utilities, another thing you can actually get rid of. You can create a self-sufficient space because you're in a much smaller place. You use much fewer utilities, which means you need much fewer um, power requirements you don't need as many solar panels as it were required to maintain a 5,000 square foot house and so your utility bill of, like mine was about $300 you had three air conditioning units I mean just ridiculous right you can have a tiny air conditioning unit and um, you can run it off of solar panels so um, or a wind wind generator you know there's all different options there hydroelectric even if you're by a stream so you know you can get rid of the bank payment you can get rid of real estate taxes you can get rid of insurance payments and utility payments and you can even create, you know, going one step further, put a green roof on your tiny home and you've got vegetables growing that you can actually reduce your food bill. So, so many, so many advantages to it. But let me get to the big thing that people really have a, a hard time with, it seems. And that's this fact of, well, I don't want to feel like I'm having to give, you know, to, to uh, cut back. I don't want to feel like I'm having to 
you know, kind of go backwards and, and get smaller. And that's the complete opposite of what we're talking about here. A tiny home actually gives you the freedom. It gives you, it creates independence for you. So you actually can uh, have, you can actually live more because again, you're not held back by all the stuff and you've got more money to spend. And because you're in a smaller space, you can actually afford to upgrade your house with much, you know, much more uh, higher, um, more sophisticated technology that can do more things. You can spend more money on because you need less of it. Um, you also can have much, you know, higher quality appliances. You can have um, just really, custom, really cool custom-made things. I mean, to give you an idea, um, you know, on, on, you know, there's a big thing in Huntsville. You know, a bunch of engineers live there, so everything is priced housing-wise in in uh, price per square foot. So, the, and the whole thing has been, okay, how much, how much can I get for my money, right? How many square feet can I get in a house? And so there's builders who are building homes that you could get for as low as like $50 a square foot. You know, you could buy a lot of house. You can probably get 2,000 or, 2, or 3,000 square feet um, for only like $150,000 or something like that. So, you know, real, real affordable, but it's just empty space. I mean, it's just the cheapest of the cheap. They're just like, you know, it's just sheetrock, sheetrock walls, cheap carpet, you know, cheap vinyl flooring. So yeah, you got a lot of space, but it's crap space. I mean, it's just, it's not high quality whatsoever. But it's space, so people think that they're, you know, better off because they got a much, much bigger house. Um, so with a tiny house, you know, you, the equivalent living space, you know, you're looking to spend probably two hundred dollars per square foot as opposed to fifty. So it's, and you, even in Huntsville, I don't think you can find many houses where you're going to spend that much per square foot, um, that much that where you're going to have that that much quality per square foot. So you're building a much higher quality home. Everything is custom. Every little space and nook and cranny is thought about and planned and engineered into the house. So you're really getting probably four, five, even 10 times the amount of, out of use and, and productivity and usefulness out of each inch or square inch of space in the house. So when you add all these different you know benefits and factors together, you come to realize that it really is a really cool thing, uh, tiny, tiny home living. And it really frees you up, gives you some independence, gives you freedom, you know, less bills, less hassles. And on top of it all, uh, you, a lot of these people are building these tiny homes on, uh, on trailers. So now don't, I'm not talking about like a mobile home trailer or even an RV. This is basically a full, a full house, just mobile, just a house on wheels. So you can take it wherever you go. You could leave it, you know, and I've got a lot of people that I know who are doing this and they're taking their home with them. I've got, there's one couple, um, Rick, that I met in San Diego and uh, they have a blog and they're actually sharing their, their travels across the country, but they dance across the country. That's kind of their thing. They'll go to different dancing competitions um, as they travel around the country. They've got a fifth wheel that they, they carry around in their truck and um, they, they might spend a couple weeks here and then move on to the next location, spend a few weeks there. I mean, if you're looking to retire, what better way to spend your retirement money than to buy a, a tiny house you know, one of these that I'm talking about, you could probably do for $30,000, twenty to $30,000 is kind of the norm that I'm seeing, including the trailer, including everything that you need to basically be able to, to be self-sufficient and live, you know, in this tiny home. And, uh, you know, a, a tiny a tiny home on a fifth wheel trailer, you could probably get maybe 300 square feet, 250 to 300 square feet, which is basically an eight foot by 34 foot trailer. And, um, you know, you can have a a queen size bed in there. You can have a, a an actual shower. You can have, you know, a, a proper couch and a big screen TV, and uh, you can have all the amenities, all the things that are important to you. You can fit in this tiny house and really live the, uh, you know, the freedom lifestyle. And so you could be traveling across the country, and instead of you know having to feel like you've got to cut back in your retirement because your income goes down, well, just sell your house, take the equity out of your house, buy a, a nice. Um, tiny home that you can put on a trailer and buy a nice truck to tow it around the country with if you don't have one already. And, um, you know, there you go. You got all this disposable income, no more payments you got to make to the bank or anybody else. You can travel around. All you need is some land to basically park your house on for a week or two or four at a time. You can go to state parks around the country. You can go from beach to mountain to valley to coast to coast, country to country. I mean, you can go to Canada, you can go to Mexico or whatever all with your house, everything that you have with you, everything that you need, whether you could be working from home as well, you know, you could have a computer in there, you got mobile internet service that you could be using, you can have dish satellite TV so you can still watch your TV. I mean, literally you can do everything that you need to do in these in these homes. Because of the internet today, because of technology, 
there's no limit to what you can do and how awesome you can live. So case in point, this is actually my plan for what I'm going to be doing. I'm looking to sell my house and take the equity out of it and buy it or build a custom tiny home. I'm going to build it the way that I want it so it has all the things that I need and nothing that I don't, maximize the space so my dog and I can travel. I can be in Colorado for a month and go skiing for a month straight. I'm going to have a fireplace in there, you know, my big screen TV so I can watch my Liverpool games, you know, queen size a comfortable bedroom, um, you know, have a full appliances, an oven, and a stove, dishwasher, perhaps, on demand water heater, um, you know, full shower as well. And, um, you know, I'll have an office in there as well so I can have my printer set up, my fax machine, everything that I need to be able to do business, conduct business, be able to, um, you know, um, conduct, operate my businesses across the country, all from my laptop, my, my phone, my iPad you know, have satellite internet, and I'm just, it really makes sense. And what really, I guess to really believe it, to see if you're still skeptical and you're still thinking, ah, you know, it's just not for me, and it's not, I mean, it's not for everybody. If you've got a family of four kids and three dogs and a horse or something, and you're trying to fit in a house 250 square feet, okay, that's probably not not for everybody. But if you're maybe, a, a, you know, if you're empty nesters, you know, looking to, looking to retire or in retirement, looking for how to make your money go a little bit further, great option for you. If you're a young professional couple and you don't have kids yet and you want to travel the country a little bit more or you want to be able to, you know, uh, take off for a month here and a month there and go down to the beach or just, you know, make your vacations count more, hey, tiny home living, it's a way to go. Just take your house behind you. And, you know, the, as far as the construction of these homes, too, a lot of these, from a distance, you wouldn't be able, even be able to tell how small the house is because all the architecture, the scaling of it is just, just awesome. The way they hit the windows, the roof, the, 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 the lines... It just looks like a bigger house and you're just like, wow, this is a tiny house. And it's just amazing when you make good use of the space, you can put a loft in there, you can have stairs or steps, um, just so many cool creative ways. And on the internet, you can find all sorts of ideas, what people are doing and how they're living. Again, all these people have a similar mindset and similar ideas that they want freedom. They want independence. They want less bills. They want more disposable income. They want to have more um, lifestyle, a higher quality of life. And tiny home living can really do that for you. Again, what opened my eyes to this was when I saw my friend, um, Linda, in Idlewild, California, up in the mountains, you know, just, just east of L.A., and um, she was living in a five, about a 500-square-foot home. And a lot of the homes that are permanent homes that they're building, these tiny homes, that's about the right square footage, about, um, you know, a quarter of the size of the typical, a quarter to a fifth of the size of the typical American home. And it's just her. She's a, she's a writer. And so she has, you know, a bedroom, a bathroom, a living room with a nice fire, big, big wood burning fireplace and a kitchenette. And she's totally got everything she needs there. Very simple living, um, doesn't have any more than she needs and she's able to go out and enjoy her life and have, she has friends over all the time who stay there. Um, so it's just, it really works for her. And when I saw that, I realized, wow, I can do that too. I don't need to have all this extra square footage, all this extra space just to, what, just to look good, just so everybody can, you know, think that I'm doing really well and like, oh wow, good job Hans. You're, <laughs> You're, uh, you know, lining the, the uh, pockets of the banks, you know, banks. It's just kind of silly to me. But again, for me, I have different needs. For me, you know, it's, it's about simplicity. It's about freedom. And um, for me, it, it makes sense. I get it. And if you don't get it yet, I just want to kind of fill in, use this video to kind of share a little bit about why this is such a, um, a trending topic, you know. And uh, it is cool. It really is something that's, that's really big. There's TV shows all over the place on it. It's all over the internet. So now you know. Now you know some information as to why this is such a big trend, why it's really picking up. As you can tell, I'm excited about it. I don't know if you can even understand what I've been saying, probably talking way too fast, but it's just exciting. And um, I'm excited about it. I got some, some pretty big ideas related to it as well that I'll share in the future. But, uh, you know, watch this space. I'll be sharing as I'm doing my custom build here in the next uh, few months or so for my tiny home that I'll be taking with me you know being towed by this truck i'm in right now my dodge ram 3500 diesel i've got a um, fifth wheel um, hitch in the back so i can tow my house with this truck and I'm so excited about it. it's gonna be so cool i can visit my friends and my family and instead of traveling as much as i do which i love traveling but i won't have to travel half as far because i can just go one direction i have to go back to huntsville where you know my house is and my office and my my everything else so go to take it all with me that is really cool so Anyway, leave me your thoughts down below. What do you think? Am I crazy? Um, have you seen this trend? I mean, I've, I just posted something else before on Facebook, and it just started going crazy with comments. So I'm, 
Um, I'm curious to hear what you think. What are some of the pros and cons? Could you see yourself living in a tiny home? Is it no way, you know, you want your space, you want your house? Or are you somebody like, yeah, I'm willing to give that a shot. I think I could do that. Uh, what are your thoughts? I'm really curious. I really want to get a, um, a good sampling of what people's ideas are and things and suggestions because I think this is something that could be really cool for the right people and uh, done correctly. So leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you and uh, more videos to come. Take care. Hans Schaff, looking forward to reading your comments. Bye-bye.